Hello! Today I'll be doing some match analysis of one of my favorite Guilty Gear Exert sets, Tomo vs. Nage in the Mikado Arcade League in 2017. These sets were played on Rev 2.0, but for Leo and Faust there weren't any huge changes in Rev 2.1. If you know Exert in general, you should be able to appreciate this. There was a lot of good footage from this league, but before I get into the match itself I should provide context. The Mikado Arcade is sacred ground for Guilty Gear and many other arcade fighting games. Every year for Guilty Gear Exert they had the Tenkaichi Budokai League, or the Greatest Under Heaven League. It's serious business. For the season beginning in 2017, there were 8 players divided into 2 groups of 4. Each player played around Robin first to 10 sets against each other player in his group. The players who had the best records for set and game wins moved on to the next stage. The 6 remaining players were seeded into a single elimination first to 5 bracket using their match records. The winner of that bracket would play a first to 10 against the lower ranked of the 2 players who had already advanced. The winner of that set would play against the higher ranked player from the first league. As you can imagine, this was a true test of matchup knowledge and experience. You couldn't simply waltz into the league and expect to win with gimmicks. You weren't likely to qualify unless you spent your evenings and weekends neck deep in arcade cigarette smoke. The two players in this set are Tomo and Nage who play Leo and Faust. The players and characters contrast each other perfectly. Nage is a longtime Guilty Gear player from the XX games. He's always played Faust, and from what I can tell, he's always been quite good. But, always a bridesmaid, never a bride. At the time this match was played, Nage had been one of the best players for a long time, but never quite THE best. Tomo is a newer player who started with Guilty Gear Exert's sign and absolutely threw himself at the game. He's played more matches than almost anyone I've ever seen, and he quickly established a name for himself. He went from being nobody to being the best Leo player in the world, hands down. Nage plays Faust, a classic Guilty Gear character. Faust is an item throw zoner who uses long attacks to pester his opponents and random items to change the state of the game. When his opponent tries to approach, Faust intercepts them with pokes and anti-airs. If you're coming from Strive, you may think Faust is garbage, but he's actually one of the strongest characters in Exert for a variety of reasons. His game plan is very simple and stable, his combos do a lot of damage, his neutral control is very strong, his mix-ups are extremely scary, he interacts well with system mechanics and gets Oki from his basic combos, and his items are almost all good for him. No trumpet in this game. You wouldn't think a zoner like Faust would be allowed to have a strong mix-up or pressure game, but Faust actually does, for some reason. In addition to the usual Guilty Gear can opener, Faust has a proximity unblockable, an obnoxious dive kick, and an instant overhead. He can maintain pressure for much longer than you'd think. Side note, Faust's instant overhead and the mechanics that lead to it are really important, so I'll explain them briefly. Faultless Defense is a defensive mechanic in Guilty Gear performed by pressing back and any two attack buttons except dust. Because it's difficult to press two buttons on exactly the same frame, there is a grace period of one or two frames where any normal can be car cancelled into FD. Most of the time this doesn't make a difference, but some command normals affect the character's movement or hurt box. Faust's J2K Dive Kick is one such move. It halts Faust's momentum on frame 1. Thus, Kara cancelling this move into FD means Faust can halt his air momentum without committing to the attack. This is called FDC, Faultless Defense Cancelling, and is a core part of Faust's mobility and mix-up game. FDC lets Faust do an instant overhead into a block string that either combos if it hits or leaves him plus if it doesn't. He can also air break out of a jump or an air dash, and generally make his air movement much less predictable. He cannot do this in Strive. Tomo's character Leo is the polar opposite of Faust, an Exert newcomer who plays a hyper-aggressive rushdown style. Leo has limited movement due to a short jump arc and a step dash instead of a run, and his pokes are pretty mediocre. However, Leo's pressure makes Faust's pale in comparison. Leo's main gimmick is his back turn stance, which gives him terrifying Okizeme and bypasses common defensive mechanics in Guilty Gear. Back turn P and K are both throw invulnerable, which means the traditional Guilty Gear defense of mashing 4H and praying will just get the defender counter hit. Back turn S is very fast and gives a huge combo on counter hit. Back turn H is a fast advancing plus on block overhead. Leo's back turn dash can cross through his opponent, and his back turn D is a counter that is invulnerable frame 1. If this sounds extremely hard to deal with, that's because it is. Leo also cranks his opponent's guard bar a lot and has a very high damage output given how simple his combos are. It's easy enough to zone Leo out, but if he gets in even once he can run away with an entire round. Leo may sound like a simple character, he is the origin of the phrase unga bunga after all, but that's really only true of his offense. Playing neutral with Leo can be quite challenging because his kit is almost entirely geared towards pressure, okizeme, and combos. 
As I understand it, Strive Leo is pretty solid and has some decent pokes. In contrast, Exert Leo is one of the weaker characters because he's so linear and has such limited neutral options. It's really up to the player to be unpredictable in order to overcome Leo's linearity. Because I'm just focusing on a single round, I want you to watch it yourselves first. It's really not that long, and this way you can experience it for yourself before I dissect it. After I do that, I'll show you how the final round went so you can get closure. Oh, and the commentary audio is Japanese on the left side and English on the right. Two guys yelling in your ears in different languages is the authentic arcade experience. Pretty sweet comeback, right? Let's dig in. The score is 6-3 for Tomo, and the games thus far have been pretty one-sided. You wouldn't think Nage is one of the best players in the world watching him lose these games. Despite all Nage's skill and game knowledge, Tomo is such a wild and unpredictable opponent that he gets overwhelmed. Nage is a supercomputer. Tomo is a stream of garbage data that does not compute. The match starts simply enough, with Nage backing up and trying to establish an item zoning game. However, at 94 seconds, Nage throws a black hole, which is pretty bad. The black hole is one of Faust's exert only items. It drags in both characters and makes gravity stronger, but it affects Faust less than his opponent. As you can imagine, being dragged towards a rushdown character like Leo is terrifying, so Nage just tries to neutral jump and wait out the black hole. Tomo, expecting that Nage wouldn't immediately challenge him, gets into back turn stance and starts mashing back turn D to hopefully counter anything Nage does. When Nage tries to poke with 2H, that's exactly what happens. Nage is too far away for Tomo to get the automatic follow up, but he's still dragged close to a back turned Leo, which is just awful. From there, Nage commits to blocking for several seconds, and Tomo knows Nage wants to be on the defensive. Nage doesn't have burst, and he doesn't have enough meter to FD much or blitz. Thus, Tomo gets some fake pressure resets that Nage could have jumped out of or challenged. Nage tries to backdash, but he just puts himself into the corner and ends up blocking more Leo pressure while his guard bar gets cranked and starts flashing. Panicking, Nage spends all his meter on FD to force a whiff before trying to jump out. He is promptly hit out of jump startup by 5H, which is a forced counter hit due to the flashing risk bar. The 5H counter hit and risk bar give Tomo a juicy air combo that takes about 70% of Nage's health and puts him right back in the corner defending against back turn Leo. The resource difference is immense. Tomo has burst and 50 meter, whereas Nage has 90 Either. Nage tries to FD a bit more and gambles with 5k, which fortunately doesn't get clipped by back turn S. Finally, Nage bets big on Faust 5D, which has enough invulnerability to get through back turn H and counter hit Leo out of back turn S. In non strive games, Faust's 5D is a gimmicky reversal invulnerable on frames 1 to 10, then vulnerable for a huge gap during the rest of the startup. It works here, but if Tomo had done back turn K or P, I think it would have lost. Faust's mid-screen ground dust combos are pretty tame, so he doesn't do much damage, but he does escape the corner, push Tomo to his own corner, and build one bar of meter. This is the turning point of the round. Tomo, knowing he has the life lead and doesn't need to gamble, blocks a couple items and pokes, and Nage pushes himself back to neutral. Tomo responds by setting up his H-Sonic Boom projectile. Nage bites and dive kicks over it. Tomo jumps over Nage, then gets in with his own dive kick. He gets a small combo and some projectile YRC Okizeme. 
Nage blocks the Okizeme and manages to take his turn back, throw a bomb, and get back to mid-screen. It might look like he's made good progress on Tomo's life bar, but Guts is kicking in now. Nage will probably need to open up Tomo three more times to kill him while he's still one opening away from death himself. Tomo tries to set up the H-Boom again and approach over top of it, but luckily Nage threw oil. Oil is another exert-only item that screws with the ground momentum of anyone standing on it and explodes if hit by a fire attack. Faust's bomb bag is one such attack, which Nage uses to force Tomo to block above the H-Boom. Nage also spends some of his meter on FD to avoid chip damage. Nage gets a couple of hits here, but he can't convert into damage off jump S because he's too high up, and he can't get a full combo off 6P because he was too far away. All he gets is far S into item throw. They go back to neutral once again, and Tomo tries to set up the H-Boom once again. Nage reads the H-Boom and counter hits him with scalpel thrust, reeling Tomo in for a combo. However, the item Nage threw was Mini Faust, which is drifting down and threatening to screw up the combo from the scalpel thrust. Tomo sees this and decides to mash 2H. I'm not sure exactly why he chose 2H here. My guess is he was trying for Leo's H flash kick reversal and got an input error, but knowing Tomo it could have been anything. However, Nage, knowing that Tomo sees the Mini Faust and expecting him to block, resets him with 6H, which is an overhead. 6H is reactable if you're looking for it, but the animation is a bit subtle and the range is huge, so it's harder than you might think. Also, Exert arcade cabinets have 6 frames of input delay, so 6H's 25 frame startup is actually 19. The whole situation is a bit of a mess, but it works out for Nage. Tomo gets counter hit and takes the guaranteed burst point in the pogo into going my way combo. He still has the meter advantage, but his life lead has dwindled to almost nothing, and now he doesn't have burst. Tomo, knowing that Nage would respect him too much to think he would go for the H-Boom again, goes for the H-Boom again. What a scoundrel. Nage bites again and dive kicks over the H-Boom, but this time Tomo uses one of Leo's Rekkas to go underneath it, YRC, and punish the dive kick. Nage tries to counter YRC and save himself, but he gets counter hit. Nage bursts immediately and Tomo doesn't bait it. They reset to neutral, both with 50 meter and neither with burst. Nage knows that Tomo is a scoundrel, so he tries to use scalpel thrust to counterpoke the inevitable H-Boom. Tomo, knowing that Nage knows he wants to use H-Boom, waits out the scalpel thrust, and then does another H-Boom. What a scoundrel. Nage uses his door teleport and a YRC to get to the other side of the boom risk-free. Tomo goes clear past him and they're back in neutral with Nage down 25 meter. Nage decides to be aggressive for a change and Dash jumps into a dive kick at Tomo. Tomo wasn't expecting this so he doesn't anti-air Nage, but fortunately the dive kick wasn't actually that scary. Tomo throws yet another H-Boom, Nage throws a bomb, and the two cancel each other out. Nage throws some food and decides to go in after it since Tomo respected him before. However, this time he uses his dive kick FDC to air break and bait an anti-air. That anti-air never comes because Tomo uses his S-Boom YRC to win neutral and chase Nage into the air. Tomo isn't in range for an air throw, so he tries to staircase Nage back to the ground with jump S, but an exert blocking an air attack while you're in the air restores your air actions. Faust triple jumps away harmlessly. Nage, not expecting Tomo to anti-air him, dive kicks again, but this time Tomo anticipates the dive kick well in advance and gets into his far S guard point stance. This stance lets him absorb a non-low attack and instantly retaliate with any H normal. You saw what an H button counter hit did for Leo at the start of the round. Nage, realizing that he is about to be violently murdered, does perhaps the smartest thing I've ever seen, and the reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place. Right now, Nage doesn't have 25 meter and he's past the point where he can FDC, so he's committed to the dive kick. Nage realizes this and does the only thing he can do, which is to connect with the dive kick and special cancel it into his only aerial special, bomb bag. The dive kick and special cancel give him just enough meter to YRC the bomb bag, which he does before the bomb comes out so he doesn't have to block it. Faust's bomb bag is symmetrical, so if he had blocked it then he would have been out of meter and thus unable to block one of Leo's ground normals. Essentially, Nage cancels into a special move to build meter and immediately cancels out of it before the special move comes out. Nage manages to escape a 5H counter hit and come down with jump P. Tomo hasn't given up through all this, and went from his far S guard point right into his 5H guard point, which catches Nage's jump P on the way down. Tomo tries to counter attack with 2H, only to be counter hit by Nage doing 2K. Tomo has no burst, so he's forced to hold the combo, but the combo and gut scaling are so strict that he barely takes any damage. Nage barely gains any meter because of the meter gain penalty from his YRC, but he does get an item throw and a shot at Okizeme. His item throw is meteors. Tomo knows that if he continues to block, he will probably die. Tomo chooses not to block and does his reversal flash kick instead. Nage baits it, Nage wins. Finally, after more than a minute of nerve-wracking neutral and defense, Nage claws his way to victory and keeps himself alive in the set. I will never get tired of watching this.
Nage plays solid, compact Faust and doesn't get hit a single time. The score is now 6 4 Tomo with Nage in his second wind. Thanks for watching. If you want to see this set or others yourself, there are links in the description. The Mika 10 sets are extremely fierce competition between arcade legends, which are thankfully made easier to digest due to Majin Obama's English commentary. They make for great viewing, and although they were played on an older patch of Rev 2, they are still some of the best sets the game has ever seen. Watching them live during the event was a real treat. If you want personal recommendations, I like Fumo vs. Tomo, Haken vs. Zadi, and Haken vs. Omito. This video was different from my usual analysis videos because I've been busy lately. I wanted to make something simpler and a bit more personal. I'm trying to have a new video up every month, but sometimes life comes first. Please let me know if you enjoyed this style of video, or if you'd like to see more match analysis like this. I read every single comment, and I really do appreciate your support and encouragement. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe. I have a pretty slow upload schedule, so that's the best way to keep track of me. Take care!